Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's popularity has taken a plunge after a number of bad news weeks for the government. Was it the trip to India that began it all? Can they reset the agenda with things like gun control legislation, the rollout of legalized cannabis? Let's bring back the scrum. Laura Stone, of course, is here. Joyce Napier, Craig Oliver, and now joining us, Nick Nano, CEO of Nanos Research. Uh, okay, Nick, uh, welcome back to the scrum. You're the pollster of the group here. What's going on with the Liberals? Why the plunge? Well, it's a, an accumulation effect. And you know what? This India trip was the kicker because it had pictures. It had he said, she said. And, you know, people can latch on to those types of things because it's like perfect water cooler talk. Young and old, rich and poor, you can talk about the Prime Minister's trip to India as a head scratcher. Okay, but why was it? I mean, if that's, I know that's the, we all say trip to India and that's sort of the turning point, but underneath that, what's going on? Why suddenly the dip in the polls? Well, you know, what we're seeing is, is that men are actually moving away from the Liberals. The Liberals are still doing very well among women, but men have been turning away and it kind of started a number of weeks ago, you know, and it's been followed from the tax issue, it's been followed from ethics, and it's kind of like, it's like retro hour now, where the conservatives are now starting to get traction among men. They haven't done well among that cohort that they desperately need since the last election. And Andrew Shear went to great lengths, Laura, to keep that India trip, as we just spoke about in the last club, in the news uh, with that long filibuster. But then the liberals keep rolling out things that aren't changing the channel. Gun control, weed. Nothing seems to be uh, controlling the agenda. Yeah, I mean, the liber liberals are playing to their crowd, but I think that the general public's getting a little sick mm -hmm. of the things that Justin Trudeau wants to talk about. Uh, we've heard a lot about gender, and if you mention, you know, men kind of getting sick of constantly feeling like they're being lectured to, possibly, or this people kind issue. You can't say Mr. or Mrs. on the phone calling Service Canada <laughs> anymore. So I think that people are just feeling a little bit like it's a little too much lecturing from the liberals right now, and I think that they, they're might be some backlash on that. Progressive politics has always been a good thing for liberals, uh, but I think the Trudeau gang is sounding more and more like social engineering. I think they've moved left of the left, and the danger for them now is that they're losing the center. Uh, and Trudeau is out there talking too much. Uh, you know, even if you're a giant intellectual, people will get tired of hearing you every day, every day. He's wearing out his welcome. <laughs> and he needs to spend more time at home, not governing from 30,000 feet, uh, where he can focus on his government and managing the country. Joyce. I think progressive, yes, it's the preachiness of the whole thing, mm -hmm. right? How we have to think and how everybody has to think the same way correctly. You can't say certain things. You've got to behave in a certain way. Service Canada now, right? And, and, and Service Joyce Canada has... not like to be told uh, what to do. <laughs> okay. But I don't think a lot of people do. Plus, you know, voters, let's face it, you would know this, have a, a short little span of attention. After two and a half years, you know, we're thinking, okay, we've heard from this guy and 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 you're quite right perhaps a little bit too often so where can we look now who do we who do we want you know th this this government is getting to be completely off track there needs to be someone standing beside the prime minister and saying whatever happens what does he, what are you doing to help the middle class? So when they're talking about pot legalization, when they're talking about all these other issues, even gun control, you know, those things are too distant from making the daily lives of average Canadians better. Didn't we used to talk about the kitchen table? Isn't that what yeah. they're forgetting? They need to talk about the economy a lot yes. more. I think if they can get out of NAFTA clean and successful, that will give them a big, uh, uh, a big lift. Yeah, Craig, I think it's not a kitchen table now. It's like a Ouija board, and it's kind of going around all over the place, and no one knows what's happening. Yeah, I wonder, let's just, you mentioned gun control. So this week they passed some legislation, they put forward some legislation, increased background checks, retailers will have to, uh, keep the data, Laura. There was some talk, is this a backdoor long gun registry? But the conservatives were actually a little quiet about this one as well. And so it kind of went up and then it went down. What do you make of it? Yeah, well, this legislation was criticized kind of from the pro-gun lobby, but yeah. also gun right, uh, gun, um, advo gun, gun control advocates who said it doesn't go far enough and even hitting the, the liberal government for not being feminist enough. So um, it doesn't seem to have played well in either crowd, but the liberals are smart to use it because the conservatives want nothing to do with this. They didn't bring up any questions about it. They don't want to talk about guns. Andrew Scheer is the 
only federal leader who owns a gun himself and they won't say what his office won't say right. what he owns or does with it. So they know that this is a polarizing issue. So they might do some fundraising off of it, but it's not something that they want to bring into the mainstream. Andrew Shears dropped one of his great ideas during the campaign to win the leadership of the Conservative Party, uh, which was that there should be an ombudsman for people with guns to defend gun owners. <laughs> I didn't hear a word of that anymore. No. Right. Now, the other thing is, uh, is the pot issue, the cannabis issue. The Senate almost killed the bill, not as close as they might have thought, but it did raise, and, and here we are, mark it on your calendar, we're going to say the Senate raised some really important issues. You see that? We said it. The Senate did, about a very important piece of legislation. This is core to the Liberals, they've stuck to their timelines on this. Uh, they believe it's very popular, and I know there's going to be some, some issues with the rollout of it. They believe, Nick, that this is going to work for them. Well, you know, the thing is, at a very high level, People are okay with what right. the Liberals are proposing. It's when you get into the details yeah. and the rush. And you know, the, the irony of this is that this is probably gonna be another self-inflicted piece of damage <laughs> that, you know, it's going to dog them from now to election day because there will be stories, there will be things that happen that probably won't be ideal that will kind of symbolize like why did we do this and what was the rush and why don't we wait to do this See, A lot of people still think July the 1st is it. As of July the 1st we can all smoke up everywhere and buy whatever we want yeah. everywhere. Now that is not going to be true. It's going to be months after that before they implement it and everything's legal. That's going to upset a lot of people. When you said we, Craig, are you no, are, no, are you preparing? No, I, I just wonder. I, I just wonder. Listen, but, it, but it's he's waiting. For but it's, 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 it's you're not doing it's hell, Craig. Don't worry. Okay. It, I, I just I don't I don't think that the Senate had the mandate there to, though to right, to kill this legislation, this bill that had passed the the House of Commons where MPs have passed it. They can't kill a bill before it goes to committee for study and where they can even make recommendations. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that would have been extremely unpopular had Sen senators voted it down before it even made it to a committee. Let's just look ahead a bit. Um, one guy's name that we haven't mentioned, we've now mentioned Andrew Scheer, and we've now mentioned Justin <coughs> Trudeau, and again, we have not mentioned NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. Who's benefiting, Nick, from the Liberals' dip in the polls? Well, not the New Democrats, and you know, the thing is, is that what you would expect, you know, that progressive world out there moving around? You know, what we've seen is that Andrew Scheer and the Conservatives have benefited from the Liberals' kind of misstepping, and uh, I think right now, for a lot of Canadians, they see the NDP, and uh, there's just not a lot of meat on the bones from a policy perspective or from a leadership perspective for them to latch on to. And that's why Jagmeet Singh has to get out there. He has to be kind of seen with his caucus and to be much more proactive. But is it soft support for Conservatives? Well, well that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is there a genuine shift here or what? No. Well, it's too early to say whether it's a genuine right. shift. It could just be parking. Right? People not being happy with the Liberals and parking with the Conservatives. So if you're a Tory, you should not be too smug. What it means is that the, right. the, the numbers are volatile right now. But I could see some of those red Tories, maybe those middle of the road, left leaning conservatives who went to the Liberals in the last election, now thinking twice about, about voting for them, especially after what we saw with the small business tax changes, some of those fiscal conservatives who have been disappointed in the government.